Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video and this time we're back on the Nintendo Switch again. So this was sent in to me by Paul and he thinks he knows what's wrong with it. So basically he's written me a little note that I'm not going to look at unless it's an emergency. So I'm going to take a look at it, see if I can work out what it is and then towards the end of the video we'll see what Paul thinks is wrong with it and then we'll compare notes to see whether what I think is wrong is what he thinks is wrong and also then it's like a kind of get out of jail free card or it's like a phone a friend from who wants to be a millionaire if I'm getting stuck I can look at that and then it might be able to point me in the right direction so now apparently it doesn't turn on but there is signs of a backlight on it so first things first let's plug the little USB charger into it and see what's uh, see what it's doing Right, so 0.39, so now it should go down to zero and then go up to 1.4 or whatever it goes up to, but he said it's not doing that, so it's basically stuck at this here. Let's just do the, the normal thing, let's just try to turn it off by holding down the power button, see if that makes any difference. Let's drop to 30. Okay, didn't drop to zero though, did it? Let's unplug it and plug it back in again. Yeah, 0.39. Just going to have a quick look in this little port here, see what it looks like with my eye loop in the USB C port. Well, to my eye, it doesn't seem too bad. It kind of looks okay. I can't see any loads of pins bent out of the way or anything like that. So, what I'm going to do is just off camera, I'm just going to plug it into my computer just to see if it recognizes it as a USB. No, it's definitely not being recognized. Uh, I'm just going to quickly plug it back in. I just want to try the lead both ways. I can't remember if I did that originally or not. Nothing there. Now, when I plugged it into the PC, because it was a bit darker over there, I definitely seen the backlight light up. So we can safely say it's definitely not working. So let's take this thing apart and see if we can do some tests on the capacitor, see if we can find out what is, uh, what's, what's gone wrong. A few screws missing from the back, so it makes it nice and easy to take apart. Right, straight away I'm looking, and something doesn't quite look right with this screen connector down here. So if you have a look, can you see there's like a dark patch here and also it looks like the actual ribbon cable itself has been scraped. Let me put it on macro so we can get a real close look. Right, can you see there, there's like a dark patch, isn't there? Just here, so that doesn't, uh, that doesn't look right. So I think what we'll do is, let's, what should we do to begin with? Well I suppose first of all, let's take away the battery. Let's measure the battery, see if there's anything in the battery, and then let's test for the capacitors, shorts around the capacitors on some of the chips, see if that shows anything. But I'm thinking, first impressions, it looks like it's something to do with the screen connector there. All right, let's put it to DC. Right, 3.1, so that's, that's low, isn't it? it should be 3.7. So that's, uh, yeah, that is that is very low. Okay, let's let's see if I've got a battery to plug in here, just to see if the reading changes on our little USB reader. Okay, so I have a good switch here. This battery is showing about eighty something percent. So let's see if I can uh, connect this up and see what happens. All right, so it's going to thirty nine. Let's see if it jumps up to 140. Yeah, there you go, zero. And 130, right, okay. So that says to me that this is now on. Let's have a look at the actual screen and see if there's anything, because I think there's still a problem with the screen. Did I hear something there? Oh no, it's gone down again, hasn't it? Hold on. There you go, listen. There you go. So there's nothing displaying on the screen.
Whoa, 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 whoa. What's that? Light. Okay. Let's unplug. Wow. That's some serious noise. What's that coming from? That didn't sound good at all, did it? That was a lot of squealing. Right, wow, what was that? Okay, well look, we know that the switch is turning on. I think the problem is this ribbon cable connector up here. So let's undo a little bit of this. Let's get rid of the heat pipe, make ourselves some room, get rid of this little card reader. That was one hell of a scream though, wasn't it? Unless somehow by me having it on there it was shorting against something. So let's not worry about that just yet. But you definitely heard that the switch was on but there's nothing on the display. So, worst case scenario, battery replacement and it should work as a dock switch because we can just undo that ribbon cable if that is the faulty, uh, if that is the faulty thing. So uh, yeah, let's undo a little bit more of this. Now I wonder is the battery faulty or does it just need a big charge up? Maybe it's been completely depleted. That was a real high pitched noise, that was. I remember I had something else with a high pitched noise. But I can't really remember what it was now. I remember it was on a switch. Right, so let's zoom right in now. I've got to be really careful with this connector because they cause me a, a lot of bother. Okay, so here it is, and you can see whatever the damage is up here. So I'm just going to get something wide to lift this up with and I'm going to do it on both sides at the same time. There we go. Right, let's try to gently take this out. Look, so that's the offending bit there. Now I wonder, is it actually on the motherboard or not? Still looks a bit dark in there, doesn't it? Can you see the corresponding one? I wonder whether it's putting some kind of... Uh... Well, mind you, it's not putting a short. I had it once where it wouldn't turn on because it was uh, the ribbon cable was putting like a, a short to, to ground on it. Now I wonder can this be cleaned up? I'm just going to gently try to clean that with a fiberglass uh, fiberglass brush just to see if it cleans up or not. Just trying to go in line with the pins so I don't damage everything. So, I'm just going to have a look under my loop. Right, okay, I think the ribbon cable is going to be okay. It's just the actual board here which looks a bit bad. So I'm going to get some IPA. I'm going to try to clean up both of them and uh, see if that makes any difference or not. So IPA is 99.9% .9 alcohol. And I'm just using a little flux brush in it to try and... Uh, Try to give it a bit of a clean. It's annoying because the one connector I hate on the Nintendo Switch is this connector here. Good news is you can now buy them, but I wouldn't be confident soldering that back on because I know it would just melt straight away. What I want to do is I want to see somebody else do it. I want to see Tronics fix or I want to see somebody else on YouTube doing it. And then basically I can copy what they do because I I know when I've dealt with anything like this before, this plastic burns so easy. And people say heat it up from the other side of the board, but the other side of the board has a load of components on. So then if you have it upside down with the heat underneath it, those components just all fall off before this thing melts. So uh, yeah, I, I kind of want to see somebody else do it first. So I can learn from them before I would attempt that myself. I think we'll try and put it back in now. You can see that the blackness has gone from it. Yes, I've taken off the kind of gold plating or whatever's on it, but at least now it should still be conductive. So let's try and ease this back in. Now, when I put this back in, a lot of the times I do end up bending, bending the pins. Oh, 
Right, I think that just went in perfectly. Right, let's zoom out now and let's put the card reader back in. It's annoying because this card reader ribbon cable never lets you down and if it did, then it'd be fine because you can just swap this really easily but this thing here makes the board completely redundant apart from using it as a dock switch. I wish that connector was on here and then, uh, yeah, then it'd be much better. Just going to pop a couple of screws back in. I think what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm just going to plug in this battery just to see if it does anything now on the, uh, on the screen. Let's just turn it on and see if we have any life at all. There's no life there. Plug this in. See what happens now. Now it's only doing it at 0.29, so it's not jumping up to 0.4. Oh yes it is, now it is. It's still not still not turning itself on. So let's pop the battery out again. And let's try to set this one up so we can see the screen. I used to have batteries out, but I've used up all my spares on those things that I did quite a few months ago, like the Switch Mini and the Switch XL, and uh, the No Switch Switch. So I'm sort of out of everything. Right, okay, so that should be insulated from uh, from the other one. Let's see what happens now. Right, it's gone to zero. Right, so now the switch is on. But there's still no display. So now, is that because the connection's bad or is it the LCD itself, I wonder? I think I'm going to put this over onto my dock and see what happens because I can use a dock extender. Okay, so I've got my dock here with the dock extender coming out the top. So if I plug this into here, we can see whether it's going to dock on the TV or not. All right, so let's see if anything happens up on screen. Yes, there you go. It docks. Fantastic. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plug in the Joy-Con see if these sync up. I've got to be so careful because that battery is only just in. Right, that's synced up. Yeah, and I think that's synced up. Right, let's see if we can actually use these. Right, let's see now. Yeah. Oh, my battery's gone on this one. Okay, but that one's working. Right, okay, so at this moment in time, it appears to be a working switch, but only in docked mode, and you can see it's charging up there. So, Paul will basically need to get himself a battery. I haven't got a spare battery. Uh, but let's see if we can work out what's happening with this screen, whether it is a faulty LCD, or whether it's a faulty LCD connector on the motherboard, because that's quite important, because if it's a faulty LCD, then it would still be working in a battery and an LCD to make this switch work again. But if it's a faulty connector, then I, I don't know. I mean, unless you've got somebody that really knows what they're doing, I think it's probably best just to leave it as a, a docked Nintendo Switch, because it still has value, especially if you get yourself a Nintendo Switch Lite for when you're out and about, and then you've got a permanent docked system. So it definitely still has value. Right, okay, so we're getting somewhere. Let's bring this back over to the desk now and find out about this LCD. Right, just before I start messing around with the LCD screen, I'm just gonna leave it plugged in for a while because I've got to do a school run anyway. If you have a look, it's now showing 3.4 volts. Originally when I plugged it in, I think it was 3.2 something. And if you keep watching it, it is going up slowly. In a minute it will be 409, then it will be 410. So I'm just gonna leave this plugged in. What I've done is, it's just still plugged into here. What I've done is I've just disconnected the screen cable from it because whatever the fault is on here, it keeps making the 
displayed, the backlight lights up. So obviously it can't get a charge because the backlight's constantly on. So I've unplugged this now, held down the power button, and it does appear to have turned itself off. Because if we can get this battery revived, then that will be really good because obviously it means that Paul doesn't have to buy a new battery. So I'm just going to leave this in and hopefully if I leave this in for an hour or so, it might have enough power in to turn itself on off its own accord. Obviously the screen ain't still ain't going to work, we're going to have to look into that separately. But if we can get it down to just like, you know, uh, one fault, then that's going to be something better. Okay, so it's been about an hour now, so let's see what's happening with this battery now. See if it's... See if it's gone up. So I'm just going to do it while it's charging, and then I'm going to unplug the charger, take this off and actually get a reading on the battery itself. So we're on DC. Right, okay, so look at that. It's nearly gone up to 3.8. You can still see it's rising. Or is it rising? Hold on, went down there. Let's see if it'll go up to six. There you go, it's gone up to six. It took a long time though, so obviously the uh, the more it charges, the slower, the slower it gets. Right, let's uh, unplug this now, and let's take out the battery, and let's see what the actual battery's testing by itself. See if it's gone up from whatever it was, 3.2. It has, look, 3.7, fantastic. So maybe the battery will be savable. I'll probably have to charge it up for quite a bit longer. I'm just gonna see what happens now if I plug this one in, see if we get any life out of it. Right, 41, let's see if it drops down now. Yes, it's dropped down. Brilliant, 1.31, so now this switch should be on. Excellent. Result, okay, so it looks like the battery will be savable. So now we have to find out what's happening with this screen. So let's uh, turn it off. I'm just gonna hold down the power button. There we go. Well, so that's really, really good news. So now, I have got a screen here, but I don't know whether it's a working. The problem is, like I said earlier, I've used up pretty much all of my spares, and the bits and bobs that I have left over, a lot of them would be from water damage switches, because remember I had a, a sort of quite a few water damage switches off eBay that didn't weren't advertised as water damage. So this one here doesn't look water damaged, so I'm hoping that the screen is okay, but I don't really know. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, first of all, I think I'm just gonna put everything from here into here. It is missing the leads and stuff like that. And then let's say if it does work, then what I might do is I might actually just try to take the LCD out so Paul still has his original digitizer and stuff like that and just swap over just a faulty component. But just to see if this is gonna work, I am gonna transport this into here. Right, okay, so I've got it back together now with the different screen on. I've only just put the very basic parts in. The on and off switch isn't on this one, so I'm just gonna plug it in to see what happens. No, so look, it's not turning on again. So it must be when I plug in that ribbon cable for the screen, it's stopping the turning on off the switch. So those pins must be shorting together inside or something. Let's uh, unplug that again just to make sure. Right, so now I've disconnected the ribbon cable from the screen. Now let's see if it will turn on because it wasn't turning on before. Obviously it's not gonna display anything. There we go, look, it's gonna to go to zero, and that's it, 1.30. Now, I haven't got any uh, speakers in here, so you can't hear it. So when we plug the screen in, it's stopping it from turning on. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna have a look in this connector as close as I can and see if I can find out what's happening, because I don't believe that this screen and the screen here are both faulty. 
I mean, this screen might be 40, but the odds of having, every time we plug something into there, it's knocking it out. So uh, I think the pins, I think some of the pins, because I had that before, where one of the, one of the grounds was basically shorting with another pin. So it was a putting a short on, and that's why it wasn't booting up. Okay, while I'm here, I'm gonna plug this back in and see if I get any grounds on the capacitors around here, because I'm pretty sure there was a ground on one of the capacitors here when I had the faulty screen connector before. Okay, so it's been about an hour now, so let's see what's happened. Right, so here we have this little charge chip here, you know, the one just below the fan and to the uh, right of the main chips. And if you have a look at this capacitor here, so the rest are showing okay. You see if I go between here, only on one side, but look at this one. Short in there and short in there. Yeah. So now I'm gonna zoom out a bit. We're gonna unplug that ribbon cable and see if that short stays or goes. So now the screen's been disconnected. There you go, it's just underneath now. Let's zoom in again. All right, so now if you listen, shorting, not shorting. Yeah. So when we put the ribbon cable in, it's putting a short on the side that goes to the chip. So now what I'll have to do is I have to take the board out. I'm gonna look really closely in here to see if I can see anything. Maybe I'll be able to see a pin that's kind of uh, crossed over with another one. In which case then there might be a chance, a very slim chance that we might be able to uncross it. I'm just gonna be zooming in and having a look. Right, so it's this one here. Let's open up the flap. And you can see the, the black marks here. So it looks like it's burnt, doesn't it? Right, I'm gonna to have to connect my camera to a big screen to be able to see what's going on here. Because that definitely looks burnt in there. Right, okay, it's very hard to see, but I think when I'm looking through my eye loop here, I wonder if it will make it easier if I do that with the camera. Basically, if you have a look down the bottom here, can you see that you can see like, look, a pin, no, I'm not talking about the big pins that sold to the board, the little ones here. So big pin here, then look at the little. Big, little, big, little, big, missing. Okay, big pin, little pin, blah, 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 all the way along, look, missing, missing. Can you see, and then they come back again. So there's two missing from here and there's one missing from here. And when I look in here, it's weird because through the camera I can't see it at all. And this is a trick of the light. But when I look through my eye loop, at the missing pin on this side here, it looks like it's running along the bottom. So it looks like it's kind of like bent right along and running across the bottom. But for some reason, when I'm looking in here, can't see it at all. But it's, when I look through with the eye loop, it looks to be at the very, very bottom. But even if I was to somehow get that back up here straight, I can't actually see these ones at all, so I'm wondering whether these ones have just uh, gone completely missing. I don't know where they are, because I can't see them back there at all. Basically, this is such a horrible connector, it really is. I hope somebody does a video on how to replace it, because I think this Nintendo Switch would work fine if this was replaced, but unfortunately, I'm just not good enough to do it. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I mean, this looks like a lost hope anyway, so I think I am gonna get a tiny needle and I'm just gonna see if I can find these other ones because I don't think, even if you were really, really good, you would be able to solve this particular, fix this particular one here. I think it needs to come off and a new one soldered on. And they're not expensive. You can buy them on eBay for a couple of pounds, but I think it's two, two or three, 2 99 or three ninety nine. So, you know, like under five US dollars. But I need to know how to be able to do it. 
because taking this one's off is no problem obviously you can melt the hell out of it to take it off and then I can you know put leaded solder on there the only way I could think is maybe to put low melt solder on there so it melts before the plastic melts but you see this lip here this white lip it melts so easily honestly even if you just got a lighter flame on that it would start bubbling up really quickly it's uh it's it's just it's not like those iPhone connectors where you can add quite a bit of heat to them. This thing just seems to bubble up straight away and deform. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a needle because the way I look at it is it's kind of broken anyway. If it gets to the stage where it no longer turns on because I've mashed it up so bad, then I can just physically take this off the board and then maybe in the future Paul will be able to get somebody to solder it back on or maybe in a couple of years once I've watched other people do it if I feel confident I could always revisit this in the future. Okay so I've got myself some needles I'm just going to pick out the smallest ones and just try to see if I can rearrange any off those pins. Now unfortunately I'm going to be doing this off camera because it's going to be my head is going to be on this eye loop right down low so all you'll see is the back of my head anyway. So I'll get back to this in a little bit when I know more what's going on. Guess what, I managed to get the first pin in. Now, don't get your hopes up because I still can't find anything over this side, but look, do you remember before? Remember the little ones I was talking about in between the big soldered ones, look. Can you see now it's here. I managed to bend it back, it was going right the way over here. I had to get it in here and keep flicking it and flicking it and flicking it. And eventually I got it in there. But now I still can't see anything here, but I've been putting all my efforts into here to begin with. So now I'm gonna keep concentrating on this bit here. So just to show you what I do, I know it's annoying that I'm not filming it, but basically I'm looking through the eye loop and then if I find them I'm kind of putting my needle in there and trying to just gently lever it over and then lever it over again to try to get it into place. I think purely out of curiosity, because I have got one pin back, just in case these other ones were grounds that are not in use, I am just gonna I am just gonna put it back in just to see if it makes any difference or not. what happens. I haven't got the fan in, I haven't got the heat sink in. I just want to see if anything happens now. I haven't got the digitizer in either. And this is the, uh, the faulty screen. Right, let me plug this in here, it doesn't seem to do anything there. Not turning on, it's still not going to zero, so it's definitely something to do with that burnt bit there, isn't it? Yeah, well it was worth a try. Right, let me struggle on for a, for a little bit longer. Right, I still can't find those two pins, but I've been trying on the burnt bit to kind of separate the two together in case one was uh, a ground. So uh, again, just because I've done something slightly different, I'm just gonna put enough back together just to see if the screen will do anything. Oh, it's gone straight to 177 now. Excellent, okay, so the screen is now connected. I'm making progress, and can you see it is on? But yet there's nothing that, there's nothing actually displaying. But at least now it's not throwing up the fault anymore, so it looks like I have definitely separated the, the ground from, for example, a live pin. Okay, now I'm gonna try it on this LCD here. So now we've got the bad board but with the good LCD. Right, okay, it's gone to zero. Yeah, so the switch is on now but again it's not displaying anything. So unfortunately I'm nearly about to give up on this. Obviously I'll close it all back up and it will still be a working switch as far as the dock is concerned. So that's definitely progress, it's still got value, hasn't it? But it's just a shame we can't get the display working. Right, I'm gonna muck around for a bit longer. I'm just 100% I'm, I'm sure it is that connector at fault. So I'm just gonna keep looking at that. Right, okay, I've been having quite a bit of fun with this. Now, I'm not gonna be able to get it working, but it gave me a good opportunity to set up my microscope because I got a microscope about I don't know, three weeks ago now, maybe even four weeks, and I never got around to actually setting it up. 
when you look through the microscope, it's just like night and day. Now, even if I was looking through the microscope at the begin to begin with, I wouldn't have been able to fix it because it was uh, it's too far gone, it's too far sort of burnt and stuff. But I did actually find one of the tiny pins. Uh, you won't even be able to see it. I don't know if you can see it sticking out of my... Let me, let me get the macro one. Right, you ready? That's how small we're dealing with, yeah? If you've seen that, you think it was just a tiny little metal splinter. That is one of the pins, and that was going across about three or four contacts. That tiny, tiny, tiny little thing there. So basically, I'm going to show you the microscope in a minute, but just for the time being, I am going to put it back together just in case, just in case, for example, there was going to be lines missing or something like that. But it would still be nice to see, you know, to see something on it. Let's put it back in and see what's uh, see what's going down. Okay, so it's on right now, but again, of course, there's nothing showing. Ah, uh, right, okay. Do you know what? I, th I think I'm close. There's basically three pins up the top that are faulty and two pins down the bottom. So I, I suppose it was too far gone. If there was just one pin, you might be lucky and it might have been a ground. But at least I've got it connected now and it is still on at this moment in time. Right, okay, so let me show you the microscope and show you how much difference it makes when you're looking at them under that. Right, okay, so here it is. It is a, what the instructions say, it's an SE400. Now, when I look through my eyes, it's like really, really clear. Unfortunately, when I go through the lens of the, uh, using this camera here, it's basically near enough impossible to see because it just magnifies it so, so, so much. But basically, if you have a look there now, I wonder, can I go all the way up? Right, here we go. Right, let's try to zoom that, uh, let's try to make that clear. There we go, right, okay. So, basically, this is the faulty connector here. And the white bits are the bit at the top, and then the gold bits are the bit at the bottom, and the ribbon cable sandwiches itself in between there. So you can see it's like silver gold, silver gold, silver gold, and we move our way along, 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 and this is the damaged area here. Now, I need to work out a proper way to be able to film this, but look. Can you see there? So we've got silver gold good, and then silver gold top pins are good, silver top pin, gold pin, but there is no bottom pin, so we're missing three pins there. Two of them are curled up there. Yeah, like that, you see? And if you have a look at the pins at the bottom, can you see on the black there's like a pin, a pin, a pin, and then there's two missing pins here. Then a pin, pin somewhere there, pin, pin, pin. So the two bottom ones are the ones that snapped off completely, but these two here are all bent over. So there's absolutely no way of fixing that, unfortunately. Now, if you were really good with soldering, possibly you could solder a wire onto the back, then onto the ribbon cable. But uh, for me, no, it's just going to be it's going to be too hard. It needs a new connector. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it all back together and see if it's still working on the TV. I'm just going to put a new bit of thermal paste on it as well. Okay, so that's put back together now. All the ribbon cables are all connected up again. So I'm going to just put the back on again. It's got a load of missing screws, but basically Paul's going to get it back in the condition that he gave it to me. Apart from now, hopefully it will dock. Okay, so this is my switch put back together. Luckily that's still working. This is Paul's switch here in this end. You can hear it's on. So let's sync up the Joy-Cons. Yeah. Excellent. Right now, let's take them off and let's see if it docks. And we'll also try game card as well. So, pop it into there. Green lights on. Yay! There we go. Excellent. Okay, let's just pop the game card in. Yes, fantastic, excellent. So that is working. Right, I can't be bothered to. Actually, I'll just start the software without it. And what we'll have to do after I just double check, let's uh, just do a minute or two of gameplay. I've got to read the note and see actually what Paul thought the problem was, see if it's the same.
So there we have it, working absolutely fine. Is it as good as a proper working switch? No, of course not, because you can't do it in handheld mode, but it's still definitely better than not working at all. So now let's have a look down and see what Paul thought the problem was. Uh, actually, I just better make sure there's nothing personal in here. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's read, yeah, let's read the front of it. Right, it says here, Hi Vince, thanks for brightening up my evenings with your videos. They are so much more entertaining than I could ever wish them to be. How nice is that? It's been a true joy to see you progressing. Your skill set and your logical thinking is fantastic. I almost never scream at the screen like I do with others. Okay, well that's definitely progress. Anyhow, onto this switch. Boots to a black screen and draws a constant 410 milliamps, which is normal for standby, as you know. Doesn't do anything else. It looks like the previous owner had the charge port looked at, as there was flux around there that I cleaned up. The liquid indicator was missing, but by looking around it, it doesn't look like there's water damage corrosion. I thought I would send it to you as I'm sure you will make another entertaining video attempting to repair it. Don't worry too much. I know you were known as a switch killer, so feel free to kill this one if needs must. It's all about the journey. But well, that's nice. I do have a good idea what the problem is, but I don't want to spoil it for you, so don't look under the flap. Ta da! And that's the YouTube name. Here we go. You ready? You peaked. Oh, I checked it over as it seems the regulator max blah 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 south of the ENMC module has developed a fault. I hope I'm right. Okay, I checked it over as it seems the regulator. Mm hmm. Now, I think that that developed a fault because of the ribbon cable. I'm. 99.9% .9 sure. Well, I know it's the ribbon cable that's putting the fault on because every time we disconnected it, it was okay. And obviously, there was missing pins there. Well, look, that's interesting. I'm what I'm quickly going to do is I'm just going to have a look at one of my uh, broken switch ones just to see what this thing is. Okay, so just south of the EMMC is this little regulator here. So pulls on about this little one here, the shiny black one. I've looked at these before. This is a BGA chip, so there's loads of little solder balls underneath there. I don't know how many, it's probably four along and maybe ten or eight across or something. So there's actually quite a lot of solder pads underneath that. Now, I think in this instance that no, I don't think there is a fault with this. I think maybe Paul might have checked, I'm just guessing here, I'm thinking maybe he checked the capacitors and maybe one of them was short into ground. Just like, do you remember the capacitor down here that was short into ground? Because there was a fault on here. But remember when I took the ribbon cable out, then the, the short went. I mean, I didn't check for shorts here, but the switch itself is working fine. And you can see there was damage on the actual ribbon connector. So look, it's interesting how different people have different thoughts of what the fault was. Now, I'm not saying I'm right. I, I, in this instance, I feel fairly confident that if that ribbon cable connector was changed out, I think it would be absolutely fine. And I think the screen of this would be fine as well because I managed to get rid of that burnt little bit. Now, as I said earlier on the video, maybe in the future this one can be fully fixed, but at this moment in time, there's no way I'm gonna ruin a switch that can be docked for the sake of practicing fixing that connector there. But as and when other people do it, and then I can see how to do it, then I'm more than willing to give that a go. So Paul, if you're watching this, which I presume you will be, then there might be a possibility of a revisit on this one in the future, but I'm hoping that you'll still have some fun in docks mode with this. Get yourself a pro controller if you haven't already got one, and then just have it as a, you know, a home console. So thanks very much for sending it to me. I really enjoyed it. I, I like the way that I could kind of, as soon as I opened up the bag, my eye was drawn to that burnt little piece on the ribbon cable on the screen, and then it was kind of nice fault finding from there. And it's nice that we got the battery going again. So if you have a look now, can you see there that we've got the little symbol up and it's holding its own as well. So if I take it out of the dock, you can hear, well, you can hear that it's definitely working with that battery. So it was obviously just completely depleted. So uh, yeah, really, really happy with this one. And you know what, with the switches, I never seem to get bored of them. I'm not saying I'd like to do like five a day every single day of my life, but they just always seem to, they always seem to be a bit of a novelty working on them. So I really, really enjoyed this one and I hope you guys did too. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.